The joint investigation between SMU and the NCAA has concluded that between September of 1985 and December of 1986, monthly payments ranging from $50 to $725 were made to numerous student athletes. According to SMU's investigator in this case, those payments were made by one booster, who neither the university nor the NCAA will name publicly. The report states that certain key athletics department staff members agreed to the illegal payoffs. And as a result of those arrangements, 13 members of the football team received about $47,000 in school year 1985-86. Eight of those student athletes continued to receive another $14,000 during the fall of 1986. I find not only inside the community, with our faculty, our students, etc., and I find outside the immediate university community outrage that this has happened and that it has continued since two years ago. The sanctions levied against SMU go beyond the one-year death penalty. The NCAA has tacked on another two years to its current probationary period. SMU will be on probation until September 1st of 1990. And the university has been instructed to conduct annual audits of its football players during that entire time. Next year, when the Mustangs are allowed to play football, SMU will be limited to seven games, none of which will be home games and none of which will be televised live. The university has also been prohibited from so much as teaching the fundamentals and techniques of football this season. And SMU is limited to using no more than one head football coach and five full-time assistants until August 1st of 1989. Athletic scholarships have been nixed this season, and no more than 15 student athletes will be allowed financial aid next year. In its report, the Committee on Infractions says severe penalties have been levied to make up for the great competitive advantage SMU has gained over the years. They are meant to serve as an example for other universities that are tempted to follow in SMU's footsteps. Stephanie Lucero, Channel 4 News.